Today on The Baby Historian, an Egyptologist from 1904 considers the infant carriers found on a 3,500-year-old tomb wall. I stumbled upon this image on a website called Period Paper, and I had to learn more. Using the text on the image, I found that it was from Max Mueller's series, Egyptological Research, Results from a Journey in 1904, which was published by the Carnegie Institute of Washington in 1906. The image depicts a painting on the wall of the tomb of Anna, a scribe who lived through the reigns of four kings, Amenophis I, Thutmose the I, II, and III, though he died before Thutmose came of age, when the king's aunt, Hapshitsu, was regent. His tomb is located on the Theban necropolis, Mount Shek Abd el Khuna. It was built in the Middle Kingdom during the 18th dynasty, around 1500 BCE. The tomb was filled with sand until French Egyptologist Hippolyte Bosec began an excavation in 1891. Bosec published his watercolors and memoirs of the excavation in 1896. Once it was excavated, it was left open to anyone, which resulted in serious damage to the tomb. This is why we can't have nice things. When Mueller arrived in 1904, this was the state of the wall with the Syrian women. I have tried to save for science by sketching, tracing, and photographing the part of which is of special value to the anthropologist, viz. the representations of the foreign nations bringing tribute to Egypt. He described the four women pictured as Syrian the term Asiatics being any number of peoples from the east of Egypt. Muller says that the three women are slaves due to the presence of their children, and I don't quite understand that, but that's what he says. While the woman without a child is believed to be an Asiatic princess for the harem of the king of Egypt. I should probably point out that in ancient Egypt, a harem was more of a community albeit a standalone one in a palace of royal women and children. It contained a nursery school and harems were an economic institution with their own means of production. For example, the harem palace at Mendinet al Gharab was known for producing fine linen. And harem women weren't isolated from the wider community in ancient Egypt like they were in later Ottoman harems. All four of the Syrian women are in high class dress, owing to the generous tucks of fabric and the blue and red embroidery or fringe on their dresses. Mueller notes that depictions of Syrian women are very rare in ancient Egypt and that this one should be taken as representative of Asiatic types, not a depiction of an actual historical event. Unlike a lot of researchers at, it, at the time, and to be honest, most today too, Mueller takes time to consider the infants and the infant carriers in the painting. Is the white, i.e. linen bag in which the children are carried on the mother's back part of the clothing? I suspect it is. The first woman has indications of a piece of cloth, like a plain seam, running over the right arm and shoulder. Likewise, the following person, who seems to support the right arm by it, Notice there is an embroidered seam. It would appear that this is the same piece which, unwrapped and held up by a string or by its own end, serves as a carrying bag for the baby, but is it then a loose end of this shirt-like dress? Mueller isn't entirely trusting of the original artist, thinking that they perhaps were a bit lazy about cleaning their paintbrushes and so painted colors on garments they felt should have more color without any consideration for how ancient Syrians actually dressed, and perhaps needing to depict the slave babies without having seen Syrian infants, the artist simply painted babies how they were commonly seen carried in Egypt. In another tomb on the Theban necropolis, there is a depiction of women from Nubia carrying naked children in a similar fashion only in what looks to be baskets rather than cloth. The babies, one carried on the shoulder in the way still most common in modern Egypt, are stark naked, as is the rule with both Syrian and Egyptian children in such representations. Only one wears a princely costume, a long shirt, the Hebrew katane, with characteristically embroidered seams. The tress on the crown of children, which other paintings exhibit, somewhat similar to the ancient Egyptian characteristic children, has not been observed by our artist. The child in princely costume is assumed to be high-born or royal child sent as a hostage to Egypt. The richly clad child with the third woman would then not be the child of his leader, 
but some young noblemen sent to Egypt as hostage. Now hostage might give the wrong impression. Even into the European Middle Ages, noble or royal families sent their children to other families to be raised involuntarily as a hostage, but they were still well treated, like a house guest who wasn't allowed to leave until they were grown and well indoctrinated. But I could be totally wrong here and maybe Mueller is using the term hostage in the sense of kidnapping to coerce the hostages, the loved ones, to meet their demands. And that about does it for this video. If you would like to learn more about this subject, check the doobly-doo for some links or visit my website. And if you enjoy this kind of research, consider supporting The Baby Historian on Patreon. And as always, a big thanks to my ongoing patrons.